Hey guys, Sherm here, and today I'm going to be testing the Jaguar XJR15 at Golden Max in Asphalt 9 Ghost Slipstream Multiplayer. Please consider subscribing if you're not already, and be sure to check out my Furum Clips channel, Furum TV channel, and Purple Team Discord. Links to all those will be in the description, and I hope you enjoy the video. So the XJR15 was one of the cars added last update, along with the Solus GT and the Saline S7, both of which I have already made videos about that you should check out if you have not seen them yet. The XJR15 is a fairly middle-of-the-road C-Class car, which I would say has maybe slightly above average stats for its class in most aspects. 207 miles per hour, nothing great, but the handling is pretty good, the nitro efficiency is fairly strong, and the acceleration is okay. Like, there's nothing about this car that really stands out, but none of its stats are so bad that they really drag it down all that much either. And because of that, it's decently well-rounded enough for what it is, and I had no issues driving it like I have with some other cars. But because I tested this car in lower leagues, as I usually like to do when I'm testing one of the lower-end cars in a multiple max for try season like this, I was able to get some decent and quite close races in it, as you will see. Here, I'm somehow neck and neck with the Saline S7, even though we hit that truck back there. We're able to get slightly ahead before the end. Uh, this this might have been the first race I played in this car. If it wasn't, it was one of the first ones, and it got me thinking, you know, maybe I can make a video about this, because oftentimes what happens is, like, there'll be a car that I really want to test, and then I just do awful in it, because it's so much slower than everything else. Not so the case with this car, which I was pleasantly surprised about. I'm sure the big news you really want me to talk about, though, is the update that has just come out a couple days ago for Windows, but was out a few days earlier on pretty much every other platform, including Steam for PC. I believe the delay was due to Gameloft having some issues, maybe getting approved for the Microsoft Store. Bit of speculation, but don't really know what else it would have been. But in any case, the update is here now. Unfortunately, because it did come late, um, and I play on the Microsoft version, not the Steam version, um, even though I have heard there's a way to port it, I just decided not to do that and leave it the way it is. Anyway, um, because of that, I did not really get a chance to test the Deus in its first multiplayer season. However, I do plan to in its second season, which is going on now, so you should see a video about that car coming somewhat soon. Um, it's pretty interesting. I did get to play a few races in it in the last season. Uh, even though I did not get enough to make a video, and I had a lot of fun with it, so I'm looking forward to testing it more in the current season. Now, the other big thing about the update that I do want to talk a little bit about is the showroom, because this is a feature that obviously we've been teased for a while. I think it was in the last update that we got you know, just the the showroom place on the main menu, which replaced clubs, but there was nothing there yet. It seemed kind of weird that they'd add that little tab in without anything it points to, but that's kind of besides the point. Now, we actually have the showroom, and definitely go check out my video about the update if you haven't seen it yet, because there I go over pretty much all the details about it. But I just wanted to kind of tell you guys what my strategy is for using the showroom. So what I'm probably going to try to do first is just start with the cars that I either got very close to maxing, that are max out events, or you know ones that I don't have a ton of blueprints left to get. Like for example, my BMW i8, great D-Class car, maybe king on some tracks, I don't know if it still is, but it's very good. Anyway, um, actually, now, to think, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure the electric R beats it on everything now, but anyway. I'm planning to try to max out my i8, um, and I'm kind of using this first showroom attempt of mine to just try to figure out what's the best strategies for getting through this. Because what I found is, <laughs> these, these different ones only last like five days or so, and there are a lot of events in each of them. Now the thing is, you can replay them, so you're not expected, I guess, to get through everything in an event at one time. But I'm trying to think, what's the best way to get through everything as much as I can on the first try. And hopefully because I only need one more star for the i8, maybe I can get through this one the first try and move on to something else. I'm not sure, but I'm looking forward to trying it out. I feel like the showroom is is similar to the Starway in a sense that it does take a lot of grinding, a lot of racing, uh, but and somewhat repetitive too. But if you're able to do that, you will be able to get a good number of blueprints for cars that you might not otherwise be able to get, or at least not this easy. It just will take a decent amount of time, and I think that is the main, not an issue, but the biggest thing you have to think of uh, when you're going through the showroom. 
There's also a new special event for the Deus, as well as one for the SF90 Stradali. Now, in the daily event, something happened that I've never seen before, and let me know if it happened to any of you guys too. But there are double events for the S-Class Elite and the Weekly Championship. Now, I... well, I don't actually have any of the S-Class cars in that Elite event anymore, so I can't play that. But for the Weekly Championship, I played one of them, and they're, they really are two separate events. Like, on one, when I played it, it I don't show up on the leaderboard of the other, uh, other one. I thought it was just showing up twice or something, but no, they're just two separate events. And I got to thinking, this is probably due to the update and maybe them making different versions for different updates. I really have no idea. Um, but that's the only thing I can think of that it has to do with the whole update thing on Windows. One way to test that theory would be to ask you guys, do any of you who are not on the Windows platform have those dual events? And do any of you on the Windows platform have them too? Because I'm assuming it isn't just me. That would be a bit weird. Now, I'm not playing the second one because I don't want to risk getting put on the cheater board. I don't know if that's something that would happen, but weird things have gotten you put on there before, so I'm just not, not gonna fool with it at all. Another video I'm gonna be making soon is about my newly maxed Yesco. Now, I've started buying blueprints for the Agera RS in, in the Clash Store. That's what I figured that I'm going to go for next. Hopefully, eventually, I can max that one too. We shall see. I think it's definitely more useful than that McLaren, which isn't even a king or anything. Not that the Agera is a king, but it's definitely one of the super fast cars in the game that I just think it would be cool to collect, even if it isn't incredibly useful. Now, coming to the end of this race here, we have a battle with this Brabham, and I go to the left, he goes to the right, and I'm able to just barely inch out ahead of him. I remember when I was super new to the game, I would always go to the right there because it had the ramp and I thought that it would always be faster because of that. It might be faster in a couple cars, but I really think for the vast majority, going to the left is faster. And so I have actually been able to beat a few people by doing that, even this far into the game, which is kind of interesting. As we're moving into our final race of the video, which is on San Francisco, it's time for my general review about this car. This was a Legend Pass car, although it probably is one of the ones that I would not have recommended going for just for the car because, I mean, it is a mid-tier C-Class. There, there's not going to be anything particularly amazing about it that you'd be able to use it in. And even though it has done decently in this video in multiplayer, I do think a lot of that might be due to the fact that I am in lower leagues. Now, I do think this, this car would do decently in C-Class multiplayer, just in general multiplayer, but because all of its stats are just average or a bit above average in some aspects, because it is decently fun to drive, I don't really think that it would be of much use beyond that. And fun fact about this race, every single one of these seven cars was a different model. That does not happen too often. Well guys, thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you've enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt, Forza, Minecraft, and other games content. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!